Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Welcome to this video series on multi-threading in Python programming language. And in this particular video, we are going to talk about multi-processing in Python. Now, I know you might be confused. You must be thinking that I was talking about multi-threading in Python, but I just said multi-processing in Python. Well, you know what? In Python, there is an infamous or famous thing called GIL, Global Interpreter Log about which I have already talked in my previous videos of this series. If you haven't looked into that, please go ahead and look into that. And because of that GIL, at any point of time, only one thread can work. Okay. So for CPU intensive jobs, creating multiple threads in Python will not work for you. If you have multiple CPU intensive jobs, which can run in parallel, you have to create multiple processes. And that's the precise reason you must know how to create multiple processes in Python so that you can run your CPU intensive jobs. Now, remember, I have talked at least a couple of times about CPU intensive jobs. Okay. If you don't have that, don't create multiple processes because processes are heavier than threads. They will take more resources. They will be relatively slower as compared to the thread and any inter-process communication is prone to, you know, many errors and undefined scenarios. So be very careful and convince yourself first that you need multiple processes in your Python programming language. So let's go ahead and see the code. So here is my Jupyter notebook. But before I go ahead and talk about multiple processes, let's just recap a very small recap on how to create multiple threads. I'm doing a recap of threading because creating multiple process and creating multiple threads the codes are pretty much similar in Python. Now, you know that uh, to create thread, we need to use threading module and inside threading module, we will use thread class. Time is not required for thread. I'm just using it for my own purpose over here. So just like, you know, any program in the world, in any programming language, it needs an entry point function like C, C++, it is main. In Python, you can create any entry point function. If there is no entry point function, then it will go as by the sequence. So in this case also, when you want to create a thread, you need to create a thread entry point function. And I have just created it over here as thread function. It does just a couple of prints and in between it sleeps for one second. So this is my thread function and I want to create the thread using the thread class built in thread class. And in this thread class, I will pass a target, which is the entry point function, the thread function. And I will now start the thread and wait for it to complete. So as I have told you earlier, you need to call start and join. So join will wait for this thread to complete. And now this thread is completed. Fine. Just a recap of multi-threading. And again, I am again reminding you that please see my previous videos on this particular series. It is extremely useful and it is even useful if you are not using Python programming language that much I can say. Okay. Now let's go ahead and talk about multiprocessing. So multiprocessing means instead of creating multiple threads, we are creating multiple processes. Remember CPU intensive job, always verify that you do indeed need multiple processes before going ahead and creating that. Okay. And when you create multiple processes, there is no kill, no global interpreter logs comes into picture and there is no shared data per se. Okay. So to create multiprocessing, I will import multiprocessing as np. This is not required. This is required only if you are doing a specific things like calling a specific function. We will see it in a moment. The important thing is that from multiprocessing module import process. Okay. Now, just like thread function, each thread has an entry point function. Similarly, each new process you create will have an entry point function. So in this particular case, here I am creating an entry point function called process function. Okay. And in here, I am just printing the name of my current process. Okay. Similar to thread, I'll create a process by specifying a target parameter with the function name, which is the process entry point function. And just like threads, I am going to start and wait for join. Now you will not see an output over here because getting output in a Jupyter notebook was problematic for me. So what I did, I have created the same code in Visual Studio code so that I can show you the output over here. So in here, 
I have written the same code. Import multiprocessing, import process from multiprocessing, import time. And this is my process function. Let me just close this. And this is my process function, the same function which I have shown you earlier. It just prints, sleeps for two seconds and then prints the process name. And this is my main function in here. I am creating a process with specifying the target as process function. Then I say process start and then I say process join. Okay. And in this particular file, I am calling main function first. So let me go ahead and run this. So once I run this, you can see the output over here. You can see this is a new process. And after two seconds, you see the process name is process one. And after this, the print call, this is completed after join called. Now in here, you have seen that process name is process one, which comes by default. I can pass a process name by specifying a name parameter over here, similar to that of thread. Let's say, you know, sample process. And if I go ahead and run this code, you can see that the process name is sample process over here. So this is the way you create processes from within your Python code. And that is all about multiprocessing in Python. Now I have talked about multi-threading and multiprocessing, but things doesn't end here. There will be more videos on this series where I will talk about, you know, thread pool or process pool and something similar, some tricks, tips and techniques which you will end up using in your day-to-day -day programming. So that's all for today. Thank you all. Thanks for watching. We will meet again. Until the next time we meet, good day, goodbye. You take care.